Right, good morning everyone. So yesterday, I think we were doing consequences of ethics. Write on a few things about consequence of ethics. Consequence of ethics. Ethics, ethics, madam, fast. Ethics as a practical utility, as a practical utility in improving, as a practical utility in improving. The overall nature in improving the overall nature of a man's life, of a man's life. Full stop. It can contribute, not just to the individual well-being, it can contribute, not just to the individual well-being, but also, but also, the overall well-being of the world. Full stop. Continue. A nation's progress. A nation's progress is not just determined, a nation's progress is not just determined by the economic growth, is not just determined by the economic growth, but also but also by its moral growth, by also by its moral growth, full stop. It is this moral aspect of a nation which plays a crucial part, which plays a crucial part in exercising, in exercising a country's soft power, in exercising a country's soft power. You guys agree with me? Exercising a country's soft power. Full stop. Now you write point by point. Just a second. Yeah, write down. Acting ethically, acting ethically can enable, can enable us to fight against us to fight against social injustice can enable us to fight against social injustice full stop example nobel peace prize winners nobel peace prize winners dr dennis Nobel Peace Prize winners, comma, Dr. Dennis from Congo, and Nadia Murad, and Nadia Murad from Iraq, from Iraq, who fought against who fought against 
sexual violence who fought against sexual violence faced by women faced by women in conflicted areas in conflicted areas next point being ethical is the most efficient way of inspiring others being ethical is the most efficient way of inspiring others to do good to do good example bill gates and warren buffett and warren buffett charitable activities charitable activities was influenced by was influenced by the selfless work of chuck feeney the selfless work of chuck feeney next one being ethical being ethical can enable an individual or even an organization or even an organization to achieve their goal and objectives to achieve their goal and objectives example tata company example tata company comma isro comma isro comma amul came okay, very back up huh? right we'll stop at this next point please being ethical being ethical can also ensure peace and stability in not just one's life in not just one's life but overall as well but overall as well example united nations comma no let it be united nations can you think of any other multilateral organization not associated with un almost everything is associated with un right so let it be next one next one being ethical being ethical can ensure unity amongst ourselves amongst ourselves at all social levels at all social levels full stop example during covid times people came together during covid times people came together due to compassion due to compassion for others suffering for others 
suffering full stop next one being ethical can also address being ethical can also address some of the important some of the important governance challenges some of the important governance challenges such as such as hyphen corruption comma criminalization of politics criminalization of politics etc next point being ethical being ethical might also reduce might also reduce economic inequalities might also reduce economic inequalities full stop example gandhi ji's what was his doctrine gandhi ji's doctrine of trusteeship you all know what this trusteeship is now you have made some money over and above whatever else you have right you have made let us say 100 rupees you require only 90 rupees for your survival the extra 10 rupees you are holding it as a trustee okay the 10 rupees you have to spend it elsewhere on others welfare all right gandhi ji's doctrine of trusteeship gandhi ji's doctrine of trusteeship comma bhudan movement bhudan movement of who vinoba bhave very good bhudan movement of vinoba vinoba bhave next slide down being ethical is even more important being ethical is even more important for a leader for a leader since it creates an ecosystem since it creates an ecosystem of creative and strategic thinking creative and strategic thinking comma promotes others to be dedicated to service promotes others to be dedicated to service comma enables a leader enables a leader to have trust enables the leader to have trust of others etc example jose j o s e muhika m u j i c e c a muhika comma ex president of uruguay ex president of uruguay let's go next being ethical might create happiness and content in an individual content in an 
individual full stop how many points one more being ethical enables an individual to be a better social animal to be a better social animal since he or she since he or she enjoys the trust and love of others the trust and love of others full stop come back listen to me now yesterday i had given you a question right explain the contribution of ethics to human and so social well being all of you have written that anyone who has not written it madam pardela what should i do madam beat you on your knuckles it's okay but most of the points that we have written just dictated can it be used there in your answers now what i want you to do just for a few seconds compare your answer to what we wrote just the points the points that you have written right is it too long or is it too short shorter longer any there sir in between na huh? middle part whenever you write an ethics answer please make sure that the arguments that you make na should be just one or two lines preferably one line and wherever possible give an example that is what we have tried to do yes or no now in that question there was something as human well being and social now some of you would have clubbed all of your points under one head nothing wrong with that but if you want to increase your marks my suggestion is go for human well being in one place and social well being in other place so in human well being it can be physical it can be mental in social well being you have all your relationships right societal growth country's growth and everything coming into the picture okay even before that introduction how many lines introduction have you written is it 5 or more than 5 lesser very good can you can you tell me what is your introduction madam you have defined what is ethics how many of you have defined what is ethics okay anyone who has done something else other than that madam first class sir huh? okay definition is good but please don't use that definition of moral principles and everything use something which has good amount of ethical terms in case you don't want to use definition keep in mind that this question is asked from what ethics and human interface where you have essence and all those kind of things listen to me very carefully when you are writing answers henceforth in the introduction itself i want those terms in the syllabus copy to be reflected there the essence of ethics is to help us to lead a good life comma what else will you write apart from that moral purpose let's forget that the essence of ethics is to help us to lead a good life in this process interfacing with others 
through humane values can achieve our moral goals something like that you have essence then you have what human values then you have interface right i'm not asking you to fill each and every line with ethical terms but wherever possible in the in the introduction please use key terms from the syllabus in the introduction itself i have not taught you philosophers and everything once i teach you philosophers i will be giving you even more options for you to write an introduction as of now definition you all will be doing but henceforth if possible do this did you understand coming back to the conclusion part how will you write a conclusion for this how will you write a conclusion what what conclusion have you written madam what conclusion go ahead tell me yes okay mm. very good that's a good enough sometimes what you can do you can end your answers with a quote that suits that question yes on i've told you yesterday you have to be very strategic when you're using quotes now for that question that was given a man with ethics will ensure human and social well being a man without those things is like a curse upon this world here they have compared him to a wild beast but it is a curse can i say that now india wants see imagine i've given you one way of concluding using a quote i'm going to give you one more second one now india has plans of progressing yes or no now this progress will not be achievable until and unless we become ethical now to become ethical what is that one thing that you suggest see what you have written in your answer is basically rephrasing what you have written in the body of the answer now in conclusion i want a solution see we know that we are not that ethical you agree with me so to become more ethical what is it that you suggest what is it that you want whose role is important in your uh, syllabus copy you have something called as role of family society and educational institutions being ethical is directly related to the growth of the country in true terms to enable this we have to focus on our basic social institutions and ensure their ethicality something of that sort when you write answers with good amount of syllabus association it carries a lot more weight when you rephrase what you have written in your body of the answer using a few more lines it does not sit well with the evaluator so much you understanding me now close your eyes think think of that one event or that one issue where you being ethical will directly lead to human or social well being in the present scenario one event or one issue if i close my eyes and think which is that one issue where we need to fight i'll say climate change now let me give you one more way being ethical is directly related to how we achieve our sustainable development goals in as effective and as efficient way possible can i write that so there are n number of ways for you to conclude and all this n number of ways are good enough so what i am suggesting to you as of now is when i do a particular topic when i teach you a particular topic give you notes go back home ask yourself if a question on this topic is given over and above what quotes i have given you can have one more quote other than that how can i introduce this in my own original way how can i use these ethical terms and when i'm concluding this how can i 
bring in the real issues. Remember this, there is a difference between philosophy and ethics. Yesterday I did not tell you this because I assumed you knew, philosophy is abstract. You must be remembering 2022 or 2021 mains paper. The me knew uh, what was the topic, essay topic do you all remember? It was like Nityan, uh, Nityananda, that is philosophy. Philosophy is having a lot of abstract, it is very difficult to make sense of it. Ethics on the other hand is always practical, is always. So whatever ethics you learn in the conclusion, if you link it to real and practical issues, do you not think that you are meeting not just the demand of that particular question, but the demand of the subject itself, yes or no? That is what is required. You got my point? Okay. Right. Sir, brother Anivo, nene do. Ni bega over tray. Question kora kintha mancha na. Ashton do test itta. Office sir. Okay. What do you do? You are an engineer. Where do you work? Government ha. Double double kill sir. How are you managing your time? Good. Don't leave your job. Right? Particularly after you look at prelims 2023 paper. <laughs> Let's come back. So you got an idea how to write an answer for that. We'll be discussing a lot many answers during this course of our journey. But you must know that whatever questions we'll be discussing will be a minor chunk. There is still a larger portion where you have to put in that hard work by yourself. You write 100 questions, I will evaluate all those 100 questions provided you show it to me on certain time. After 2 years you do not come back and give me sir, I have written 100 questions. Even then I will evaluate it, but still put the effort now itself. Coming back, now we have learned what will happen to the world if there is ethics. But what if there is no ethics? What will happen to the world? When there is no ethics, I have already told you, a wild beast is loosened upon the world. A wild beast. A wild beast which does not care, which has no compassion and all it wants to do is think, act in a selfish manner. Have you come across this event, this photograph? This photograph is the collective failure of all humankind to prevent human rights violations which are happening in certain places. He is just a small boy, his name is Ailan Kirdi. Now in our present situation, you know that there is crisis happening in Sudan. You know that Yemen is one of the worst places on this planet. Probably even hell will not be like Yemen. You have Russia, Ukraine. Buka, massacre and all many things happening, yes or no? If there is no ethics, you will have things like this happening, where the dignity, the basic dignity of human beings are violated. You guys agree with me? Let's come to India. There are so many activities that we have prohibited. Untouchability is one among them. Even though untouchability we have abolished, you all know very well that untouchability still exists. Yes or no? Now, untouchability, is it clearly visible in the present days or is it invisible as well? You see visible aspect of untouchability in rural areas. Invisible aspects of untouchability, you also see in an invisible manner, including in urban areas. Hum non veg ko nahi dete hai. Right? These are nothing but invisible way of trying to prevent brotherhood based on caste affiliations, yes or no? We have prohibited, it is illegal to do manual scavenging, but still manual scavenging happens. I do not know whether you have come across this incident called as Dharmapuri incident. Have you? Yes, my friend, what is this Dharmapuri incident related to? Go ahead. They forced, they pressurized 
people who were doing manual scavenging before right right to get into that and when they got into it without any safety equipments whatsoever those toxic gases kill them within few minutes you have come across articles on a I mean, frequent basis where people from lower caste were beaten up for what for wearing shoes in front of upper caste people for serving ghee in their function is it an ethical society no whatever ethics you learn you should be able to link it to real life problems that is what we are trying to do I have given you if ethics is good relationships will be good if ethics is bad there will be a lot of misunderstanding in relationships father fighting with son brothers fighting with brothers over property issues honor killing right they are killing their own children for being bringing dishonor to their family by going for love marriage the real dishonor is being in an arranged marriage without being in love but anyways don't write this in your answer please honor killing when there is no ethics i gave you a point where i said a leader should be ethical he will inspire others in tamil nadu only i guess there was a recruit ips officer his name is balveer singh have you come across him what kind of idiot he was don't write this idiot in your answers that idiot went to a police station he is in police dress and everything he is thinking himself of singham he goes and he sees some people in the jail he changes into civil dress and he goes for interrogation and indian interrogation and american interrogation that we see in hollywood movies are totally different this guy goes there beats them left right and center using his boots hands sticks and everything and even more inhumane was he used cutting plier to remove the teeth of the accused teeth of the accused recruit hai ye is not some experience recruit he got into upsc couple of years ago that's all he also has studied ethics <laughs> in kerala there is an ias officer called as shri ram don't write his name in the answer balveer singh also don't write but incidents you write police torture incidents you write don't write the names because they are still accused they are not convicted and it will take another 50 more years for them to be convicted <laughs> right let's come back so this shri ram an ias officer from the state of kerala one day he is out on his personal capacity with one of his friends properly drunk he is now what are we thought when you are drunk you should stay in some hotel and not go home this guy he got drunk got into his vehicle and the most unfortunate thing happened where he ran over an individual now it was if it was any other individual probably he would have gotten off a bit easily but the person that he ran off on was a journalist this created a lot of anger against the officer he was kept suspended but in recent times he has been reinstated and the case is still going on i remember when i was giving mains examination in bangalore after giving mains examination i come back home i switch on the news and the big headlines was ips officer caught cheating in examination hall he is an ips officer he is writing an exam again so that he becomes an ias officer so that the institution that he was running will become famous so this ips i think again in tamil nadu only right so he goes to a center in tamil nadu mobile within the socks munna bai style right bluetooth in his ears and writing and on the other side of that phone was his wife and one famous institution in hyderabad is this ethics if there is no ethics the world as we know and its development is not something which will be ensured as yes on no? 
we are all born with certain dignities, all those dignities might not be properly safeguarded in certain cases. What will happen? Imagine they give you a question, what will happen if there is no ethics in private enterprises? They might give you this question, write down this question, back of the book, what might happen? What might happen? What might happen if there is no ethics in private enterprises? Instead of giving private, they might give it as public service or government functionaries or international organization. For this question, I do not want to elaborate answer now. What I want is, think of at least three private enterprises which are unethical and how it had a consequence on us. You got my point? Three examples of private companies and what negative consequence it had on us. Yesterday he had brought a bottle, in that bottle what was there? Blue color one? Milk is it? Okay. I thought it was some sort of a Maggie. Go ahead. Today that bottle is missing. You have had your breakfast, I guess. No, sir. Okay. See, the biggest challenge in mains is you have to think on the spot. That is the challenge, right? Now, we are doing this intensive GS2, you are all sitting and there, you are getting some content, good. But yesterday I have told you, GS4 is a bit unlike other subjects. You need to have quick thinking a lot more here than any other subjects. So, think of, when I am teaching you, right, I am saying that there will be bad things, if there is no ethics at government level, I am giving you Balvi Singh and other examples. Immediately you have to think, what will happen if there is no ethics in private? Do you have any examples? You should write. Can you think of anything? Three examples have you written, madam? Take one more, one more minute. You will get the answer. Are you done? Madam Ishita? You can't think of anything. <laughs> so, private companies are very ethical, is it? <laughs> Let me. You have one example? Sorry? Satyam Skyam, Ramalinga Raju. Very good. Listen to me carefully. Yes. Sorry? Data? Okay, good enough. Listen to me carefully. When you are trying to think of examples, do not force or pressurize your mind to think something which is at the periphery. You should look at the world which you are a part of on a daily basis. The reason why I had brought up that Maggie was not because of making fun of her. Maggie was in news. Maggie did not in an honest way, in a transparent way, say that these are the nutrients that they are using and what implication will it have on us, good or bad, bad, yes or no, it is as simple as this. Right? I even gave you a hint, the thing with present UPSC is you have to go and put the food in their mouth, <laughs> that will not work in the means, here it might. There it won't. Nestle. Nestle ka Maggie. Apart from that, yes, Satyam scandal was one thing. Now, if you think of scams in India, from A to Z you have scams, right? All of these things, private companies are involved in one way or the other. Now, all of you must have read NCRT, I am hoping. Now, in this NCRT, you would have come across this plant called as Plachi Mada plant. Remember? Now, this plant was given to Coca-Cola. This Coca-Cola 
was allowed to send some amount of toxic into a nearby place. But Coca Cola sent it over and above that. All of you have gone to doctors, hospitals. Which hospitals? Government or private? Private ke tera, status symbol alwa. Now in this private healthcare facilities, do they treat you in a very kind way or do they treat you or they see you as a nothing but a profit margin kind of thing? What do they do? Is that ethical? It is not. The unnecessary out of pocket expenditure is a reflection of profit motive in our private healthcare system. Come back, listen to me. Then you have private educational companies. Now I will tell you this company, you tell me whether I am right or wrong or you have to tell me what is the name of that company. There was an advertisement at the age of 6 years, we will teach you coding. Why <laughs> Why did I add junior? At the age of 6. At the age of 6, I was learning how to put my pants on properly. <laughs> this, is this nothing but unethical? It is not illegal, but it is unethical. Right? As of now, just write one example of a private company being unethical. Vijay Malya, Allah, Bitpudi, Nirav Modi, Bitpudi, Adbitti. Whatever we have discussed over and above that private company being unethical. I told you, always try to think from what is around you. Okay? The, th the things that you use on a daily basis. Is Google ethical? Ethical agent, madam. No. WhatsApp is listening to your conversations. <laughs> WhatsApp, Google, all your social media companies, they know more about you than your own best friends. You guys agree with me? Now, sometimes I have conversations very loud, I am wearing speaker and everything, and I might be making jokes or I might be taking names of uh, personalities, Ustad Bismillah Khan. And when I go home and open YouTube, YouTube would have been suggesting Ustad Bismillah Khan. My internet is always on, that's why. Social media companies are the biggest examples of them being unethical. You agree with me? Is this not something that you use on a daily basis? Madam, Instagram mein hai kya aap? <laughs> right? How many of you are there on social media apart from WhatsApp and Telegram? Raise your hands. Uh -huh. But you don't use it. <laughs> right. The first, after I came into UPSC, there was something called as Orkut. I don't know whether you know that. So I got into Orkut so that I could keep tabs on my crush. My crush got into another relationship. There went Orkut. <laughs> then it was Facebook. Now Facebook, it, it had just come and it was what, some sort of a fad, everyone used to have it, so I also had it. But after coming to UPSC, one, one and a half years, my friends were all going to these places, trip and all those kind of things. And I was in Delhi, old Rajendra Nagar, it is a slum area basically. I got very irritated, deleted my account itself. That was one of the best decisions I have taken in my life. <laughs> right? social media companies being very unethical. Examples are all around you. And why I specifically, specifically want social media company is, you must be knowing that we will be coming with a law called as data privacy. You have learned about this in your governance, yes or no? The importance of this. See, there is a lot of cross culture, not cross cultural, cross subject linkages in ethics. And I am telling you again, ethics is very practical in nature. So you need to have this. You got my point? In your governance classes, have you learnt about any other private companies being very uh, corrupt or anything like that? 
sorry vedanta right yes you can but now you got my point just in what another uh, last 5 6 minutes we have generated examples much more than what 8 or 9 i guess right so please make it a habit to generate original examples realistic and based on practical aspects that we are facing now red book may the examples that they have given has become obsolete in my opinion and it's very bulky as well. that's what i feel yesterday you told me that you have written notes and everything right i observed when you are writing examples you are also a bit striving this is what okay moving on i'm going to give you a few more examples who is this guy arshad mehta right you know him how do you know him scam netflix mein aaya tha na good on the other side the first person that you see his name is bernie madenhoff okay now bernie madenhoff just like harshad mehta was a stock broker but unlike harshad mehta bernie madenhoff managed to do people for a very long period bernie madenhoff was nothing but a ponzi scheme he used to take 10 rupees from you he used to take 20 rupees from the other fellow he used to give 15 rupees to you and you after you get 15 rupees right will you stop there greed irata la so he used to give that 15 rupees again he used to turn around like this this went on for a very long period of time bernie madenhoff had created so much of trust that he even became a member of what we call as security exchange commission in america and securities exchange commission is nothing but a counterpart of sebi imagine harshad mehta becoming member of sebi <laughs> so bernie madenhoff was a sec member as well he has drafted rules related to securities but at one point in time whatever lie you tell it might give you instant pleasure but at one point in time the truth will come out and bernie madenhoff madenhoff's ponzi scheme which had run for several decades that came out into public and the total scam that he did was in billions of dollars billions can you guess what could be that billions any guess is fine any guess what could be it 5 billion 10 or more than that 80 billion dollars imagine 80 billion dollars of big topi has put on investors right if we give 5 rupees extra to that vegetable vendor who is pushing cart we feel bad 80 billion dollars of worth of money was completely wiped off because of this guy in 2008 and 9 you had something called of a recession some people call it as a great depression but it was not it was just a recession now all of you have studied economics yes or no you must be knowing what were the reasons for 2008 9 recession what were the reasons lehman back hey, that was a i mean it's not the real reason that was just an output i want the real diagnosis 2008-9 you have Lehman uh, crisis, yes, there were even more banks other than that. What was the cause of that? Hey, this is not economics class, ethics class, subprime, mortgage lending, yes, but still this is not ethics class, sorry, economic class, ethics, mortgage lending. You know what this mortgage lending is? Now, if you go to a bank now, if you want to get any personal loan, they will look whether you have some sort of collateral. Okay, imagine you have a home which is 100 rupees. Then you go to a bank and ask for a loan. Will they give you loan of 100 or a little less? Little less. So, imagine they have given you a loan of 50 rupees. Now, you go to another bank and they will look at your home and say okay fine this home i think uh, even after the first bank takes 50 rupees i can give him another 15 rupees more because 80 we can get from that home if we sell it 
so they give you six, uh, 50, 65 ho gaya loan, total loan. You won't stop there, you go to another bank. Again, 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 again. This is what happened. In America at that point in time, there was cheap Chinese currency. There was so much of money that banks were willing to lend left, right and center. So at one point in time, they had lent on that 100 rupees ka house, they had lent more than 100 rupees. This was building up to collapse. One of the people who recognized this collapse was Raghuram Raj. Now when I look at this incident from an ethics angle, 2008-9 recession was nothing but pure greed at play, pure greed, 100%, unadulterated, pure greed. You guys agree with me? You want more, more and more. The guy who got 50 rupees, he went on and bought another home. Why did he buy another home? So that he can take loan again. <laughs> this is Vijay Malia style. Greed. So when you are putting it across, what will happen when there is no ethics in society or in economic domains? We will have recessionary uh, tendencies building up. In your economic class, you would have learnt about something called as hoarding. H O A R D I N G. Hoarding. Can you use it in ethics? How will you use it in ethics? Profit before people. Any company that does its business, one universal rule is people come first, then business. But people, sorry, companies, they usually forget it. Right? The question, I mean, an answer for this you have already written. So just write down what will happen if there is no ethics, if there is no ethics. Write down this quote, then we will write in terms of para. A man without ethics is a wild beast loosed upon this world. Write down the name of the person who has given this quote, his name is Albert Camus. Albert Camus. A man without ethics is a wild beast loosed upon this world. Next write below that in terms of paragraph now. The above quote, the above quote aptly summarizes, the above quote aptly summarizes the chaotic nature C H A O T I C, chaotic nature of the world, of the world, if there was no ethics, if there was no ethics. Full stop. A world without ethics, a world without ethics. will be encompassed, will be encompassed with, will be encompassed with negative emotions, will be encompassed with negative emotions like hatred, selfishness, Comma, jealousy, comma, violence, etc. Semicolon. All things, all things which prevent the progress of the world, which prevent the progress of the world. Full stop. Some of the ways that we are seeing this trend, that we are seeing this trend 
are given below are given below first point developed countries such as america developed countries such as america listen to me are they supporting globalization or are they withdrawing in recent times withdrawing make america great again who was that guy who told this donald trump right so developed countries such as america withdrawing from globalization due to their selfish interest due to their selfish interest full stop next the incident of brexit the incident of brexit might have been due to intolerance towards immigrants who were socially and economically progressing very well madam madam towards immigrants towards immigrants who were socially and economically progressing do you agree with this yes or no full stop next you right some of the civil conflicts in africa in 20th and 21st century in 20th and 21st century was due to was due to the thirst for resources and its control and its control world war 3 or even cold war 2.0 or even cold war 2.0 might occur in a world without ethics next corruption at all levels corruption at all levels might become more common might become more common right down in terms of para now so whatever we have discussed i have not given it to you in dictation but i saw you writing it in your book so over and above what i thought was new i have dictated it to you all, all right come back right in terms of para now a world without ethics a world without ethics would push people into an anxious and depressed state into an anxious and depressed state living an unhappy living an unhappy life living an unhappy life right yes this much is enough come back let's discuss another aspect of your first chapter dimensions or approaches to ethics you remember in your ethics and human interface you have essence of ethics consequence of ethics then you have dimensions now dimensions 
how many uh, dimensions do you use when you plot a graph? How many dimensions do you use? X and Y axis, two dimensions. Now, when I am trying to understand or represent ethics, there are multiple ways of me understanding it. You are getting my point. Now, imagine that graph in your mind and on that graph you are representing the morality of a person. The x axis will be meta ethics, the y axis will be normative ethics, the z axis will be applied, something like this. So, to understand morality or ethics, you need various dimensions, various approaches. That is what this topic basically means. Look at the first one. Our moral judgments, objective or subjective. What is objective? Something you can measure, something which is true. Water boils at what temperature? 100. You take it to Pakistan, there also it will boil at 100, not at 99. Na? Objective. Subjective. Subjective, it differs from person to person, culture to culture, like that. So, here they are asking, are moral judgments objective or subjective? Subjective. This question, it looks simple, but to answer it, is it simple? Difficult. Another question. How do we acquire moral knowledge? Now, you have a ready made answer which is given to you in your society, not society, ethics classes itself. Your family, right, your society, right, your uh, institutions, legals and so many other things. But that is not what this question demands. Moral knowledge, how we have acquired it over a long course of time. Now, every day you might unconsciously or consciously, your morality is changing in one way or the other. How you look at the world in terms of right and wrong is changing, yes or no? It is a very complicated process, what determines this moral knowledge and that is one more difficult one. What is the source or basis of moral values and obligations, our purpose? Now, you might have a purpose in life that you want to be an IAS officer, you think it might have been because an event happened in your life, it might be. But behind that, there is still a lot of unconscious things which has pushed you in this direction. Okay? One more difficult question to answer. Are moral truths discoverable through reason, intuition or empirical investigation? What is reason? You are using your mind. In science, you use reason. In religion, what do you use? Faith. Getting my point? Intuition. Intuition means gut feeling. Your mind knows instinctively that something is good or wrong. Intuition. Empirical investigation. You will be conducting a thorough series of experiments. You might have seen psychologists do that. Right? They take, uh, they take a particular group of people, they will divide it into control group and a non-control group. For control group, there will be one set of parameters, non-control group, one set of parameters and finally, they will make their analysis and judgments. That part of ethics, that part of ethics which focuses on the whole fundamental or the foundations of ethics by asking simple questions but with a very complicated answer, that approach to ethics is what we call as meta, meta ethics. What is meta? Not your Facebook ka meta. Meta is something which is above this world. Now, ethics, meta ethics focuses on the core solid foundations of ethics itself. Fortunately, very fortunately for you, your UPSC does not care whether you know this or not except for the first one. All other things you can forget. All I want you to know is meta ethics questions what? The peripheral or the core foundations of ethics. The core foundations of ethics in itself. That is all I want you to know. First question I told you this is what your UPSC focuses on. 
are moral judgments, objective or subjective. What is this objective and subjective? Listen to me carefully. Have you heard of something called as Universal Declaration of Human Rights? What is it? Sir, what is? Yes. Ya place alle? Geneva. You know the answer, right? But when you have to put it across, you have to do it in such a way that my attention span is very less. Sir, it was in Geneva Convention to prevent the atrocities of the world war, some countries came together and made sure that this rights will not be violated ever. Something like that. Very quickly. Okay. Come back. So, in this uni universal declaration of human rights, let us say it was written in Geneva, few countries have uh, accepted it, passed it and whatever. 200 years down the line, do you think universal declaration will be irrelevant? No. Even before universal declaration of human rights was made, the values which were mentioned in that equality, liberty, fraternity, justice, were they irrelevant? No, right? Those things which can be applied across time, across space, irrespective of the culture in which you are living and still they are true, that is what we call as an objective truth. You take Hinduism, you take Buddhism, you take Islam, Christianity, any religion, all religion have certain truths. What are those truths? Love, care, compassion, nothing more than that. You are getting my point. Objective truths. These are truths which are correct, which are accepted across time and space. The biggest example of that is universal declaration of human rights. Opposite to objective truth is you have subjective. Here they believe moral judgments or truths, they vary from person to person, culture to culture. Now, in India itself, alright, here there is no such thing as privacy, I already told you yesterday. But if you go to America, right, if you are standing in a line and you see a small kid and you are overcome by that lovely feeling and you try to play with it, they will look at you as if you have committed a mistake. In India, there is nothing like that. You are getting my point. Moral judgments vary. Now, in India, if a son is just looking after himself and not his parents, he is considered as bad. But in America, here, it is not the son who is bad, but the father who has not made enough amount of money to take care of himself. There also son has a responsibility, but first and foremost, they will be scolding the parents. Why have you not taken care of yourself? You are getting my point. Here our parents are made to take care of their kids, even when they <laughs> reach 24, 25, like that. Even now when I am crossing the road with my mother, she holds on to my hand, right? As if something will happen. I have to remind her, I am 31 years old. I should be doing the other way around. Even today, before I go, I mean, leave my house, my mother makes sure that I am wearing a helmet. She is what? 60 years old now. Still today she does it. If a mother did the same thing in America, she would be branded as bad, possessive and all those things. My mother is possessive, that is a different thing, but still. All Indian parents are possessive. Very few are exceptions. Moral judgments, they vary based on person to person, culture to culture. Capital punishment. Now, in India, capital punishment, is it followed or not followed? Followed, yes or no? Now, this capital punishment, do all countries in the world follow or there are countries who have completely banned it? Banned it? So, who, who is correct? Who is bad? Is India correct? Or is Canada bad? 
what is it? Very difficult to answer. Now listen to me carefully, very carefully. You have Sabri Mahala issue. Now we have good amount of gender diversity in this class. So, women in that menstrual age, should they be allowed to go to Sabri Mala as per you? Everyone, this is a question for everyone, boys as well as girls. First, I will ask boys, how many of you think that they should be allowed? Raise your hands. Okay. How many of you think that they should not be allowed? Raise your hands. Nothing wrong with that. Raise your hands. Good. Sir, what about you? It's about belief. So, you are saying that you should not allow them. Nothing wrong, raise, you can raise your hands, don't worry. Now, I will ask this question to woman. Madam Logo, should we allow women in the menstrual age to be, uh, end, uh, to have entry into Sabri Mala? Raise your hands. Who do you think is? Anyone who thinks no? You think no? What I am trying to say is, now just because she has a different opinion, please do not hate her. I see in WhatsApp groups, unnecessary fighting happening. Congress ke jai, BJP ke jai, JDS ke jai. It does not matter. So, you have various issues in our country which has divided people, abortion, sabri mala, right, triple talaq and everything. Each has their own version of truth subjectivity. Just because another person has another version of truth, that does not mean that they are your enemies. That is how they view morality from their own standpoint. You cannot force your morality on them. You are getting my point. Now, on this topic itself, I can talk for 6 hours, but let me stop here. Okay? Since this is an intensive course, so you have objective as well as subjective. In objective, there are certain standards that cannot be broken across time and space. Now, subjective, it differs person to person, culture to culture, situation to situation. Now, sitting here in the classroom, you will say, sir, war is bad. But in the front line area, when someone shoots at you, what will you do them? Give them a red rose, is it? <laughs> you will also fight. It's one more thing, subjective. War is not completely bad. Those wars fought by America in the last decade or even more than that is bad. When we have fought wars against Pakistan, when we defended ourselves post independence 48, right 62, we have a long list. This war was not bad because our security was threatened. Now, when people are saying that India should be vocal against Russia in this Russia-Ukraine issue, are they trying to impose their morality on us? This is what is getting S. J. Shankar very angry. <laughs> right? That is what he said in European uh, Parliament, I think uh, some representative. Europe's problem is every world's problem, but our problem is not your problem. What is this? <laughs> so, when you are writing answer, even though I am making a joke here, the moment subjectivity comes, here you write, the word is trying to influence India on Russia-Ukraine issue, example of subjectivity. But India has a different stance. Why am I giving you international relations ka example? In your syllabus, there is a topic called as what? Ethics in international relations, objective and subjective. Come back again, listen please. Our polity. Madam, you like polity? Have you attended GS2 class? Do you like our constitution? What is so good about our constitution? Please tell. With time, you can change. Very good. You have hit the bull's eye. So, you have in our constitution what we call as basic structure, right? Which you cannot break even after 1000 years. It's on. And then you have a blend of flexibility as well where you are giving place for subjectivity. As and when time changes, you will make changes in your laws.
to meet the morality which has developed objective and subjectivity it is a mix of both i asked you yesterday one question if they give you why indian constitution is ethical document ethical and living document this you can write a blend of objectivity and subjectivity that is how our life should also be a blend of both there was one question which was asked on this topic itself some values are eternal while some values change what are those values or moral judgments or morality that should not change love care compassion and everything these are sacrosanct they cannot change they are eternal what are those things which can change relative values listen to me objectivism sometimes is it is also called as absolutism sometimes then you have subjectivism which is also called as relativism sometimes there are differences but still for the purpose of this exam subjectivism is relativism objectivism is absolutism all right so this is what they had asked some values are eternal while few other values change as per time and place give your perception on this issue so what are the values which should not change love care compassion equality liberty fraternity justice they should not change what are the relative values which can change are food habits now if you are in hong kong or singapore your food habits will change is yes on no? so like that in your life what are those values which have changed according to time according to place anything i think i have told you this yesterday when i was growing up i had a different perception of lgbtq now it is different is yes on no? and we are seeing the same difference in perception at the level of supreme court as well section 377 was nullified triple talaq right like that so our life should be a blend of both objective as well as subjective okay moving on the next approach or dimension of ethics is normative ethics no meta ethics it tries to understand what is morality itself this is one of the most difficult aspects of ethics thankfully you don't have that what upsc will ask you is on normative ethics now what is normative ethics now if i am judging you or if courts are judging you as good or bad what is the document that they are using ipc crpc yes or no evidence and everything so in ethics if you want to judge a person you need a framework a framework nodi you correct a tappa anta heltira that moral framework is provided by normative ethics right so normative ethics provides you with a moral framework that you can use to judge yourself and also others you getting my point and this is where upsc will ask you questions both in your section a as well as section b in your section a right they have asked questions on all these three people this guy's name is aristotle on the other side you have what is emmanuel kant and finally you have jeremy bentham now listen to me carefully imagine i give you two president madam two presidents one is donald trump only our favorite example and on the other side you have abraham lincoln who do you respect why do you respect abraham lincoln you are judging here right so on what basis are you judging whatever principles he had good i'll ask you one more question rahul dravid and sachin tendulkar who is more good rahul dravid right madam on what basis are you judging is ethics is ethics sachin tendulkar has no ethics is it <laughs> uh -huh. uh, compared to rahul i think like he's done more good to the society 
Okay, very good. And he's a originally he's from Madhya Pradesh, but still Bangalore has a very big heart. We'll accept everyone. The moment you say something in Kannada, even if it is Kannada Guttilla, we'll accept. <laughs> right? What is the same thing in Marathi? I mean Marathi, Marathi. It's a bit difficult. Teach me after the class. <laughs> Mara Marathi? Okay. I remember watching one Marathi film, uh, Tumbad. Have you watched it? No. Today. Tumbad was a very nice film. And uh, one more film was that song that became very viral. Ah, I did not watch the film though. Very patho based film. I don't like pathos in my life. UPSC has given me enough. Come back. So when we talk about judging people, Knowingly or unknowingly, we have certain moral framework in our mind. So when she judged Abraham Lincoln and Donald Trump, she was judging based on character. Abraham Lincoln's character was full of moral principles. Yes or no? He had a good character. Donald Trump's character, you all know. On the other hand, when Madam judged Rahul Dravid, she was judging based on the good he has created. Now there is a philosophy which is given by Jeremy Bentham called as utilitarianism philosophy. In this philosophy, your action is good provided you create a consequence which creates the maximum good for maximum number of people. She applied utilitarian. You got my point? In virtue ethics, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates and most other post-Socratic philosophers judge you based on your character. They don't judge you on what thought you have, what action you have done, your character. And what is a character? Now imagine I say that you are a very hard working person. Is that your character or not? Yes. Now character is something where you have followed a value not on that one single day, not on the next day, but consistently. Character is nothing but a value which you have followed consistently throughout your life. That is what a character is. Listen to me. So here in virtue ethics, how do they judge? Based on character. Now in utilitarianism philosophy, they don't, they don't care about character. They will judge you based on the work that you have done. The output. What your character is, what your thought process is, it does not matter to them at all. Imagine we have built so many national parks, so many wildlife sanctuaries, so many uh, dams and everything else. Now when we have built all these things, there have been some tribals who have been displaced. Based on the estimates that I remember couple of, from reading couple of years ago was around 40 to 50 lakhs, 5 million people since independence we have displaced in the name of development. Is that good or is that bad? What would an utilitarian philosopher say? It is good because you are creating maximum happiness for maximum number of people. Utilitarianism always will focus on what? Output. On the other hand, you have Immanuel Kant. Now, I love Immanuel Kant very much. Your Gandhiji also loved Immanuel Kant. What Immanuel Kant says is, there are certain moral duties of yours. Sometimes it is written, sometimes it is not. But these moral duties exist just like you see sun and moon. They have existed since a long time. You can also test these moral duties by reason as well. Now, if you tell Immanuel Kant, I have created happiness for so many people, the compromise is 4 or 5 million tribals, Immanuel Kant will scold you. Because you are not supposed to do harm, that is your moral duty. You are not supposed to do harm. The moment you do harm to one person, two person, you are wrong. Very rigid fellow he is. Very rigid. You must be remembering in 1922, we had non-cooperation movement. Yes or no? Now, this movement was suspended by Gandhiji for what reason? Chauri Chaura. It was just one-off incident. Just one-off. 
but gandhi ji suspended the whole movement why because gandhi ji had a moral duty to win independence through non violence for him winning the independence through violence was not something that he wanted in 1922 if we had not gone for uh, suspending of the movement if we had got an independence it would have brought happiness for so many people but gandhi ji does not care for utilitarianism that much he cares for what kant you have moral duties and you are not supposed to break your moral duties whatsoever i'll give you a case study these are mental exercises which are done in ethics and philosophy classes elsewhere if you are pursuing that degree so you are standing on a over a bridge let us say you are standing on a railway bridge underneath uh, you have uh, trains passing this is just a hypothetical example don't search for logic so a train is coming and uh, in front of the train there are uh, two people okay now those two people are your family members now next to you you have uh, your best friend now in this case study if you just push your best friend your family members will be saved what will you do best friend na huh? you will let your family die god bless your family then <laughs> right let me ask you a question next to you is your enemy next to you is your ethics teacher not even then <laughs> right next to you is osama bin laden probably <laughs> at least i see some violence in her i'm happy that is the thing imagine you are a doctor in near your home you see a homeless man he has no quality of life madam no quality now he is very healthy though he has no quality of life he is living on roads but he is very healthy and in your hospital you come across a very rich person who needs a heart now if you get on that heart transplant uh, list it is a very very long list you are the doctor now what will you do will you kill the beggar there is an option he has no quality of life you only said <laughs> you are getting my point right when you are judging a person in case studies please do not have a rigid set of rules of judging you need to look at it from a virtue ethics perspective from a utilitarian perspective from an immanuel kant perspective and then find a balanced way in your case studies you might have seen what are the possible course of actions available if aristotle was there here what would he do if utilitarianism was there here what would they do you have to ask if you ask yourself these things five or 10 course of action also you can generate not at all difficult here i have just given you three philosophers when i take up the chapter western moral thinkers and eastern philosophies i'll tell you a bit more than that so what is normative ethics it gives you a moral framework to judge a person's actions and also yourself most famous normative ethics are virtue utilitarianism and kantianism kantianism is also called as deontology utilitarianism is also called as teleological i'll tell you this later yesterday when i was doing morality i explained to you something called as applied ethics 1960s and 70s it started to emerge what is applied ethics you have a set of ethics for some specific domains or professions medical ethics and all such kind of things so i have given some example bioethics what is the example here business ethics in your pyq what have they what had they given environmental ethics we discussed about it yesterday what i think and what this could be a probability is this year or in the coming years you might have a question on applied ethics on these fronts ethics in big data now what is big data any idea what do you think you can tell me what is big data data with a very huge storage size is it what is big data you have all read it you have all come across it what is big data sorry madam where they are connected 
So you are getting my point? This is what UPSC is playing, they will give you which of the following option best describes big data. What would you do then? Alone to Google Mada Kagala. So you need to have a clear idea. Okay. Coming back, look at this. We have connected our Aadhaar with almost everything else. Whatever activities we are doing, someone can monitor it easily. Now the data that they have on us, they can predict what we will be doing in certain circumstances and situations as well. You guys agree with me? They have a complete control over how you think, how you act. If I were to define big data in ethics, big data is an emerging platform in this digital age which can be used to control how we think, how we act and how we judge. If you are writing big data in science and tech, it is different. In governance, it is different. In ethics, this is what I think. Listen to me carefully. Now, big data is not the villain. Sometimes it is required. In places such as disaster management, prediction and everything, big data is required. But what we are seeing companies doing using big data, machine algorithm and what not, they are trying to use it for all negative reasons. You must have come across in your UPSC current affairs that RBI mandated the companies, multinational companies to have a local st storage in India or elsewhere, India itself, because we have privacy concerns. So tomorrow if they ask what is big data, what are the parameters we need to keep in mind while regulating big data in your ethics paper, focus on ethical privacy. Have you heard of something called as right to be forgotten? What is this right to be forgotten? Right. Who is, who is at control of your data there? You or the social media company? In right to be forgotten, you, right? So in big data, the data that they are generating belongs to whom? You. You should have the final say, right? Ethical privacy, non-discrimination and fairness. If I am giving my data to you, let us say it is uh, UIDA authority. Now if I am giving some critical data to you, you have come across these terms, right? Critical data, personal safety bill and all those kind of things. They cannot use this data in uh, all circumstances. There are only few circumstances where they can use it. They should not discriminate. They should be fair. This is what your Supreme Court also said in that Aadhaar judgment case, right? Blind usage of Aadhaar is not required. Where it serves a purpose, only there you have to use Aadhaar. That is what your D.Y. Chandrachud said, yes or no? So you have ethical privacy, non-discrimination and fairness, informed consent. When you join an app, they give you this dialogue box and they wait for you to check. Only then you can proceed further. How many of you have read that in your life at least once? No one, right? Informed consent is not that. Informed consent is you properly knowing what will be the consequences. Remember this, you checking the dialogue box is not informed. You should know what is the consequence. When I was growing up, when uh, you were to invest in stocks and advertisements were used to come, they used to tell very, something very quickly. Stocks and uh, shares are subject to market risk, and, uh, risk. They used to tell very fast. Then I think it was a government policy which told them, do not tell very fast, you slow down. <laughs> Since then, they have slowed down and you can hear each and every word very carefully. You might think these are small things, but imagine you are putting this in your paper and your competitors are putting what is there in red book, what is there in DK Balaji and everything. Originality guys. Informed consent. 
apart from that is there any steps in recent times which they have taken to properly go for this informed consent have they taken any steps social media companies government companies have they in true terms have they taken informed consent no that is why this is a major framework you need to keep in mind while you are dealing with big data or anything related to e-commerce alright transparency and accountability you all know what it is transparency is born out of what which value dishonesty or honesty honesty accountability is born out of which value responsibility or uh, irresponsibility right. so when you are writing transparency and accountability in governance it is different when you are writing transparency and accountability transparency is born out of honesty and accountability is born out of responsibility then you have data quality and integrity now you are setting up a multinational company now for one year you will follow all the rules next year you won't are you integra are you showcasing integrity no. come back listen to me carefully this is important from your exams now when government came with this uh, various regulatories intermediary re regulations government came out with that you remember so when it came out with that it said that a social media company should set up an officer in india now do you remember any companies who did not do that initially twitter did not do it you remember now integrity does not mean that you only follow rules and regulations when they make it integrity means even when no one is watching you you do the right thing you are getting my point now i am sitting here so you are a bit scared to open your mobile sometimes you are not at all scared but even if i am not here and you are doing some homework that i am giving you you should not use anything integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching you even when rules and regulations are not there that is integrity and do you think our companies showcase that integrity rules and regulations idru no loopholes kan nidittare yes on when you are defining this you won't just write this you will write few justifying arguments data quality and integrity companies should make sure that they do the right thing in spite of the prevailing rules which might be absent even when no one is watching you that is integrity if you follow these some of these frameworks big data can be used for good purpose and not for bad purposes ethics in ai has niti aayog set up a committee for artificial intelligence have you gone through it governance class was a report not discussed okay not an issue AI and big data they are a bit complementary to each other okay one cannot exist without the other now if i were to come out with a different set of parameters for AI AI should be used for human centric approach that is what i have written here yes on now what is this AI and big data imagine in our country as of now if you order something out of zomato or swiggy who delivers it is it a drone or is it a human being human being what if we have drones is that good or is that bad good huh? don't answer me from economic perspective answer me from ethics perspective now you have a concept called as driverless cars which are being implemented in america it will take another 100 years for that to be implemented in india considering our roads and our <laughs> civic sense but still imagine they are going to implement driverless car tomorrow is that good automation is that good or bad bad pakkana are you sure in the back of your book okay keep those two things in mind and say why it is good justification if you are saying it is bad i want justification you cannot use this human centric i want something more than that 
this year mark my words there will be a question on technology and ethics automation or ethics mark my words in this class now in this class when i give you it's s or no when you write an exam balanced okay now i have to understand your mind i don't want you to be a diplomat okay I want you to properly take a stand, yes or no. You can't always take the middle marga. Okay, go ahead. Big data, AI. Keep those two things, drones and driverless car. Yes, I want a justification. No, I want a justification. And it has to be an ethics, not an economics one. Keep in mind, we discussed few theories last, last slide. Me. The moment I ask whether it is good or bad, those theories should crop up in your mind automatically. Are you done, madam? What have you written? So privacy, ethical privacy will be valid. Good enough, madam. Good or bad? Environmental justice. Yeah. Okay, sir. Vizal Podu. What's your name? Tamil. Yes, me. Very good, my friend. Mr. Selvi, go ahead. is not there, that personal touch, interactions and everything is not there. Okay. Madam. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Utilitarian philosophy. Good enough. Not an issue. Anyone who has said that yes, automation is good. Anyone? Go ahead, sir. Hmm. But my question was specific to those drivers and Zomato's Swiggy agents. You wanted to find the overall picture, but mine was very, very specific. You got my point? Yes. Elderly people. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Come back, listen to this. Now here, in the last slide, I spoke about these three theories, virtue, moral duty, Emmanuel Kant's and utilitarian. One of you has applied it. Now it is the moral duty of the government to ensure that there is employment. Yes or no? Now, if there is a challenge to that, is not government falling in its uh, duty, failing in its duty. That's one thing. 
Now here if you want to balance it, that is what she was trying to ask me. There are certain core areas where AI should not be there. Where humans should play a larger, greater and predominant role. And there are areas as your friend said, where it could help us. That is to be selected. You cannot blindly use it as and how you want it. You need to have a proper framework. That is what it is trying to give you here. Human centric approach. If a company is adopting drones and everything to as to increase its profit and it does not care about its employees who have worked for quite a few number of years, is that good? Is it human centric? But the same company will adopt drones and everything else, but those employees who are working, it upskills them, it reskills them and employs them, continues to employ them. Is that good or bad? Good. Getting my point? Human centric approach. Other than that, you have what we call as beneficence. Beneficence means nothing but creating good. Good which is not selfish, good which is based on selflessness like what your friend said manual scavenging and everything ethical privacy you saw that in big data you are seeing it in here as well what is privacy and ethical privacy in privacy you might have had laws rules and regulations in ethical privacy those laws rules and regulations are based on moral principles right that is ethical privacy your normal privacy ethical privacy that different Sometimes laws are made to suit the interest of the private companies, yes or no? Ethical privacy may nothing like that. Moral principles which should be made because they are inherently good and they are not biased against anyone. Next one is fairness, being just. Listen to me carefully. Now let us say tomorrow automation comes, all big data and everything comes. Is it something which can be accessible by everyone? Is it fair then? It is not fair. You are getting my point. When COVID happened, we had to shift to digital mode of education. Was this a natural shift or was this a forced shift? So many people lost out on their jobs, not jobs, sorry, educations, because they did not have a mobile. Now, even if you had a mobile, having 199 rupees of data connection for that is still quite a difficult task for quite many number of people in our country. So, if AI comes and whatever good it creates, if that good is further rising the inequality, is that good or is that bad then? It is bad. So, this is how you need to write in your answers. Transparency and accountability, I have already told you this. Have you heard of this, uh, I mean, obviously you know all know Facebook, now they are trying to create uh, this uh, virtual uh, environment and everything, where you will go inside that environment and where you will create your own avatar. You know what is this avatar? All of you have used it, madam, no, you know what it is, what it is? Your alternative version in your virtual environment. You all agree with me? Now, they were testing out certain things and in this virtual environment, there was a woman a character and that woman was molested in that virtual environment. What are the rules and regulations there? <laughs> Molestation is not just physical, it is also mental as well. Yes or no? Bullying. If it happens in virtual environment, who is responsible? These are things which have not been discussed at all, right? There is a huge chunk of things which is missing. In places where it is necessary, you can point this out. Fairness not just in the outside world, but fairness or being just also in the virtual world. You got my point? Moving on. You have bioethics. Now, why is this bioethics important as of now? Why have I chosen this? Going forward, our population is going to increase or decrease? 
India na always increase. So we have to go for uh, GM crops. That is for taken. It might be delayed, but eventually we will all shift there. Right? You must have heard of three parent baby, gene therapy. Now people are going for gene therapy not because they are having some disease, because they don't want their kid to be born uh, black color, dark. If someone is born white, will they send him to Bollywood movie? Is it? <laughs> right? So, keeping all these things in mind, we need some sort of a framework to control this, to ensure that this framework pushes us in the direction of good and not in the direction of bad. That framework is what I have given moral fidelity, being consistent. Then you have veracity, options, choices. Then you have respect, non maleficence is nothing but not creating bad. And then you have justice. All right. Moving on, means versus end debate. Means versus end. Come back, listen to me. Now you have read about American Revolution, French Revolution, what is the other one? Russian Revolution. Then we have read about our very own freedom struggle. Now, if you look at all these four incidents, all of them were trying to fight for equality, liberty, fraternity and justice in their own way. You guys agree with me? Now, what was the means that French Revolution took? Was it violence or non-violence? Violence, you agree with me? Now, in our country, we were also fighting for justice. What was the means that we took? Non-violence, right? So, both had a similar end, but they took two different means. Which mean is good, which mean is bad? You tell me. Sir, is Russian revolution, sorry, French revolution good or Indian struggle is good? Both are Indian struggle. Behind you. Both are. Why? You can take your own stand, not an issue. They have their own intentions. If you compare both of them, sir, French Revolution took few years, Indian struggle took 200 years, you can say, not an issue. Okay. Listen to me again. Now, India, right, wants to maintain its internal, its peace, because it is in its domestic interest. Now, it is going to increase its nuclear arsenal. Is that good or is that bad? What do you think? It has a good justifiable end, but the means that we are using is to go for increasing our nuclear weapons. Is that good or is that bad? You tell me. Good, huh? but what if you are a Japanese citizen sitting here? What would you say? Uh -huh. But Japan, does Japan have nuclear weapons? It has. No. It gets nuclear weapons from Kim Jong-un sometimes, right, but it has no. Is there no peace in Japan? There is. You are getting my point. When you are about to take an action, when you want to achieve certain ends, you can achieve those certain ends using different multiple means. There are one group of people in ethics who say, that if the end result is good, whatever means you choose is okay. You are getting my point. There is another group of people who say that if your end is good, fine, but your means should also be good. If your means is bad, even if your end is good, I do not care, you are wrong. Now, even though we have struggled for 200 years for our freedom, we based our independence struggle on the value of non-violence. You agree with me? Now, post-independence, we have fought amongst ourselves. There have been many communal rights. But instinctively, can we all not relate to non-violence more than violence? 
no matter whether you are Hindu, Muslim, Christian, no matter who you are, we believe in the value of non-violence. Why? From our young days, it has been ingrained that this is the means to live a or to lead a life. Yes or no? So when you keep this in mind, both of them are correct or one of them is correct. Right? Indian struggle. So for some, end matters. For others, means as well as ends matter. I will give you one more. You have America, during the second wave of the pandemic, they were also suffering. Left, right and center, they were suffering. But they had good amount of access to vaccines and other critical drugs. Now, this drugs was over and above their number of population. You remember? Now, on the other hand, you have India. Now, India wanted this essential ingredient so that it can manufacture vaccines for itself. And they required these drugs because there was a healthcare crisis in our country. Now, what did America do initially? Their end is to maintain good health for their citizens. What was the means that they used initially? They said, India, we do not care. We will celebrate Diwali in our White House, but we will not give you vaccines. That mean, is it good or bad? Is it good or bad? Bad. On the other hand, India has a very huge population. It manufactured its vaccine as quickly as possible, but at the same time, what did it do? It exported it under its vaccine maitri. So, we completed our domestic responsibilities and we also adopted such means which was not just in the interest of us but the whole world as well. You are getting my point? One more example where India has walked the path of both means as well as end. One more example. Can you write it in your book? I will give you a beautiful example after this. One more example where India has walked the means as well as the end path properly and where other countries are not doing that way. One more. It can be in IR, it can be in any other field. I do not care. When will IR start for you in your intensive bridge course? Tomorrow. Saturday. Ah, okay. Even before that, you have been in the field, so you will have some general idea, I guess. Right? Go ahead. Did you write? Sorry? Non alignment movement. Good. Very good, my friend. Very good. But my friend, what's your name? Sharath. Sharath, how many, I mean, do you think other also would have written that point, non-aligned movement? There is a probability that most others also might have written. Write something that was in news and others might have missed it. I know it's difficult, I know it's pressurizing, I know it's irritating, but I don't care. Right. Are you finished? What did you write? I'll come back. Uh -huh. Yes, what is that? Right. So, in IR, you have what we call as South-South Cooperation. Have you heard of it? Where you are growing and at the same time, you are making sure those countries who are at a similar level or lower than you are also growing. Right. That is what you are trying to say. Yes. Yes, yes or no? Yes. Madam.
very good example, very good. India has pledged that by year 2070 it is going to be carbon neutral, very good. Listen to me now, terrorism. Now, when America looks at terrorism, it has two versions of terrorism. One is good terrorism, the other one is bad terrorism. What is bad terrorism? Any terrorism against their countries. What is good terrorism? Apart from itself, any other countries, if they do, it is good. Now, who has been at the receiving end of such good terrorism? India. Yes or no? India has maintained a strict stance, a rigid stance that terrorism has to be eliminated. The means it has achieved has not wavered. It does not make a distinction between good and bad terrorism. Others do that. In United Nations recently also we spoke about it. And we want a comprehensive terrorism uh, treaty against terrorism, global terrorism that we have as of now. Means as well as ends. Have you heard of something called as IPR? IPR, what is this IPR? Do not give me the full form please. What is IPR? It is a protection given to you so that you make some monetary gain out of your innovativeness and discovery. Can I say that is an IPR? Now, listen to me carefully. You have western pharmaceutical companies. All right, they have filed for IPR. You all know this. Now, when they file for IPR, is it very easy for other countries to manufacture their medicines? No, we have to buy and you have to give a good amount of money. Now, if there are only few companies who are manufacturing those products because there is IPR protection, will it be affordable to everyone? No. So, that is why India came out with its own laws, which allows for generic medicine to be manufactured in our country. Now, go back to 1980s and 1990s, because of this policy, there were many companies which came up in India, they started manufacturing generic medicines, many crucial and critical drugs requ required for cancer, AIDS and everything became more and more accessible. The end was good in pharmaceutical companies to come out with good uh, products which can meet the healthcare challenges. But what was the means that they used? Too rigid IPR protection. In our country, the end was not just providing medicine, but the means was also affordable and accessible. You are all understanding, right? Do you think people will quote this example in your answers? Other people, they might but it won't be in a very frequent manner mark my words means versus ends come back listen to me this was a real incident that happened in jharkhand now in jharkhand you have a family planning program which is happening now india requires family planning is it no hey hum do hamare do ka time gaya hum do aur hamara ek or Heki Rahega, that should be the new dialogue. Now, in Jharkhand, they are implementing family program, and in this family program, it was happening in tribal areas. So, the doctor in charge of this family program was given a target. My friend, you have to meet 100 uh, patients who are sterilized by the end of the day, just hypothetically speaking. Now, in tribal areas, the air awareness or the importance of family planning is less. So, what did this doctor do? He caught hold of some tribal leader over there, he paid him some money and he said, you please send people. Every person you send, I will give you some money. This tribal leader, he did not create any awareness. He went there and he sent people, forced them. And who do you think he forced? Man or a woman? More. Woman only. He forced woman. And unfortunately, when they went to that uh, clinic, some of them developed some complexities as well. So, here the end was good, family planning karna hai, India requires it, but means was it good or bad? Bad. One more current affairs example, since I have put up in my poster that there is going to be current affairs examples also discussed, I am trying to do justice. 
right after the crash course ends don't come and say sir current affairs model anta in uttar pradesh we want to control family planning yes or no now how are they trying to control family planning by creating incentives and disincentives yes or no now if you have two people we will not give you promotion disincentive now you compare that with south indian states south indian states have achieved their total fertility rate have we adopted any means like uh, what uttar pradesh is doing have we done that which mean which person is good uttar pradesh or south indian states no you can do that there is no you don't have to worry you won't be shot tell me which means is good south indians hearing my point end can be good but before you get to the end your means have to be terribly good as well it can't be bad there should not be any gray areas over there when you become a public servant na you will be seeing a lot many people justifying their corrupt actions because they think that it has a good end aap sabko robin hood pata hai robin hood was a robber robber what he did he stole from rich people and he gave it to poor people there are many people in service who use this logic i see some of my own friends using that logic that is nothing but an excuse for you yourself to be corrupt is on for a public servant in india means as well as ends are both important okay that is the path that india has walked for a very very long period of time okay right so if there is a means versus end debate and they are asking you which is more important what will you see means are more important okay apart from that when you are writing the conclusion if there is unavoidable conflict between the means and end one has to look for a balanced and a harmonious solution to make sure both of them are on the humane side something like this you write here also i am not compromising on means don't ever compromise on means in your answer and if possible in your life as well okay moving on we'll talk about this but before that i want you to write few things where did we stop Co consequence of ethics give the next one as dimension or approaches to ethics these are these are aspects associated with a subject associated with a subject which enables us which enables us to have a better understanding to have a better understanding of ethics full stop next one more statement you write it also gives us it also gives us a disciplined way it also gives us a disciplined way of analyzing of analyzing the present moral issues as well present moral issues as well full we'll stop some of the famous dimensions of ethics are some of the famous dimensions of ethics are first one meta ethics first one meta ethics it is that branch of ethics 
it is that branch of ethics which focuses on it is that branch of ethics which focuses on the core ideas the core ideas and questions and questions associated associated with the subject associated with the subject full stop example please write down that our moral judgments objective or subjective next you write one more how do we acquire moral knowledge how do we acquire moral knowledge etc etc next you write normative ethics it is that branch of ethics it is that branch of ethics that helps us to form an opinion based on various moral frameworks based on various moral frameworks suggested by <coughs> various thinkers <coughs> suggested by various thinkers example aristotle's aristotle's virtue ethics aristotle's virtue ethics immanuel kant's immanuel kant's categorical imperative i'll explain all these things later immanuel kant's categorical imperative comma jeremy bentham's jeremy bentham's sorry jeremy j e r e m y they don't care for your spellings madam don't worry jeremy bentham's utilitarianism Jeremy Bentham's utilitarianism Next one give the heading as applied ethics applied ethics They deal with a set of ethical codes they deal with a set of ethical codes that are specific that are specific to some domains that are specific to some domains full stop example please write down this ethics in big data and this framework i will not be giving you statements i just want you to note it down we have discussed it okay ethical privacy non discrimination and fairness
what time is your GS2 today? It is clashing. clashing, okay. So, you have to decide you are in a dilemma now. So, it will be clashing till 20, how many days? Social justice will be last, okay. How many of you are planning to go to GS2? No, oh, it is okay, you can raise your hands. One, next, anyone? So, I do not want to come back to an empty class, that is why. <laughs> okay, right. Ethical privacy, non discrimination, and fairness, good enough. Are you done with this? Next one Ethics in AI. Ethics in AI. How many of you have taken combo here? Oh, quite a few of them. Okay. Ethics in AI. Huh. Is that so? Again, there will be clashing, is it? Four hours in the evening. Continuous four hours. From what time? So, there is probability of clash. No. Okay. 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 Not an issue. So much of dilemma going around. Right now. Next one. Bioethics, please. So, was there any question on bioethics this year in your prelims paper? Was there any question? How many of you have given prelims this time? Yes. Any question on bioethics? You do not remember, madam? Nagoya protocol. Do you remember that? There is aspects of bioethics built into it. Why did they ask question on Nagoya? You should ask, no? you have to do self introspection now. Biodiversity targets and uh, Nagoya and uh, Katihena, na? right? They have aspects, uh, rules and regulations which deal with when you introduce an animal or a plant in a different environment. We got cheetah not so long ago, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So, all questions that they ask will always have some logic. Okay, is it done? Next, write down means and ends, means and ends. When a human, when a human performs any action comma he or she is confronted with he or she is confronted with multiple ways or means multiple ways or means to achieve the end to achieve the end. Would we'll stop. A group of ethicists believe, a group of ethicists believe to judge a person, to judge a person, comma, both means as well as ends both means as, as well as ends should be good. We will stop. While, while 
another group of ethicist while another group of ethicist believe while another group of ethicist believe and is of more paramount importance is of more paramount importance then the means then the means which are employed then the means which are employed full stop next para you write however in india and in particular and in particular the indian public administration and in particular the indian public administration means should be good should be good no matter other existing no matter other existing means which might achieve which might achieve the end which might achieve the end in a quicker manner which might achieve the end in a quicker manner full stop some of the examples some of the examples where both means and ends are given due importance where both means and ends are given due importance are where both means and ends are given due importance are first one indian freedom struggle was based on non violence while some revolutions have been violent while some revolutions have been violent full stop india is striving next india is striving to provide affordable and accessible healthcare through its inclusive through its inclusive ipr policy while western countries have been different while western countries have been different full stop next western countries have their own notions of good and bad terrorism have their own notions of good and bad terrorism and countries such as pakistan use state sponsored terrorism 
as an official means as an official means full stop however india has criticized the same however india has criticized the same on multiple occasions on multiple occasions next while china strictly employed two child policy comma india adopted the means of india adopted the means of persuasion india adopted the means of persuasion which was more ethical which was more ethical and sustainable and sustainable next para companies such as tata companies such as tata infosys wipro etc infosys wipro etc focus primarily on employing ethical means to achieve their organizational goals to achieve their organizational goals it is for this reason comma it is for this reason they enjoy success full stop contrasting to this contrasting to this some startups employ unfair means by overvaluing their company to achieve their organizational goals to achieve their organizational goals comma such companies have faced or on the verge of or or are on the verge of bankruptcy which company am i talking about sorry which startup company am i talking about do you have any example in your mind for the last few lines that we wrote by juice i cannot give you directly so i have given it to you indirectly okay there's so many starting uh, start startup companies have you heard of a guy called as rahul yadav now rahul yadav he was i'll just show his image hold on a second not a matter i'll when we come back i'll tell you about rahul yadav but just remember you can use rahul yadav's example for this startup company okay right i've given good amount of examples for this yes or no right on next next whenever there is a conflict whenever there is a conflict care should be taken care should be taken to resolve the conflict 
to resolve the conflict through through hyphen moral reasoning moral reasoning comma involving all stakeholders involving all stakeholders in decision making process comma forging relations forging relations based on honesty based on honesty and trust based on honesty and trust and more importantly a moral will and more importantly a moral will to find to find a mutually acceptable and more importantly a moral will to find a mutually acceptable solution means versus ends okay all right next give the heading source or determinants of ethics source or determinants of ethics come back right so when i was in what 2006 i think i was in 9th standard so at that particular point in time this person had become very famous in 2006 you did not have any social media you had proper news channels at that time the name of govind jaiswal was like he was like a national hero celebrity he was why was he a national hero and a celebrity that year govind jaiswal cleared upsc exams and he got some 40 odd rank every year people clear exams every year so many people don't clear that is a natural process but why did govind become national hero at that point in time govind's father he used to drive a rickshaw now this story is something that inspires people yes or no i have written being ethical inspires others now govind jaiswal he cleared upsc attempt and you know how many attempts he took first in his first attempt he cleared now govind jaiswal ka father as you see he is a rickshaw puller and uh, he had some amount of land which was with him govind jaiswal from his very young early days was very smart now if you are govind jaiswal's father and you see your son studying very well he has done his degree what is the first thing that you expect from him he will get a job and retire me from my work but when govind comes to him and says i want to pursue upsc whatever few lands his father had he pledged it got the money and sent govind to delhi when govind was in delhi govind knew very well that he had to clear in his first attempt given the state of affairs in his home he studied he put effort sincere effort just like all you have done he used to conduct tuitions on the side so that some amount of money he could earn and he could send back as well to his parents so when he became a rank holder in his first attempt and when people came to know they were so happy everyone was so happy for govind jaiswal and his father as well but what interest me is not his success story alone but the support that his father gave him imagine sometimes you come across family members parents who impose their will and morality on their children and here you have 
his father an auto rickshaw puller who has given him the importance the important aspect of freedom source of ethics family that is your first source it is here that you learn good ethics and it is also here that you learn bad ethics his father even though he was an illiterate from young days he pushed in his son the will to fight persevere this is what we call will to fight is nothing but perseverance he pushed into son courage is it not ethics first example of how family can push ethics into you i will not be giving so much of modern india history examples i am sorry the reason being you will write it by yourself i know many people when i evaluate the answers they will quote the name of mohandas karamchand's father and his mother puttali baina kasturi baina who is his mother thank god right i have seen students say kasturi bai they will say that now what interest me even more when i remember reading papers and watching news govind jaiswal says that when he went to a function when he was young he came across an event where he was ridiculed insulted this left a very lasting impression in his mind and from that day he had a resolve that he is going to change how people looked at him now you can change how people look at you through different ways you can become harshad mehta means but what was the mean that govind jaiswal used hard work sincerity and which one was successful harshad mehta or this one at the, in the longer term govind jaiswal sometimes the experiences that you go through will also create ethics in you when gandhi ji was kicked off the train in south africa when he was traveling to durban that gave him a cultural shock it made him realize that whatever knowledge he has whatever suit boot he is wearing is meaningless that was when he had a resolve to stay there and fight for the moral rights of indians and other immigrants who were being subjugated to inhumane treatment experiences you guys agree with me all of you have heard of raja ram mohan roy kya kya hai raja ram mohan roy ne he has fought against abolition of sati madam you even for once have you asked why raja ram mohan roy fought for a sati against sati what could be the reason where did he get the support from have you asked yourself no what should we do with you then <laughs> you are getting my point where you are going wrong our educational system now till graduation it wanted people to just take take and take it did not want people to question but when you go to upsc that system will not work now we all look at harvard princeton and say are yaar what a great college it is it is such a great college because they emphasize on discussion and make you think ethics you cannot excel if you don't think initially notes and everything examples those are all fodder it might help you but at the end of the day you have to think so raja ram mohan roy he had a brother uh, his brother passed away brother was married so sister in law is very sad one day raja ram mohan roy he wakes up and he sees sister in law in very bright clothes festive clothes he is worried because when you go for such clothes it's usually usually an indication that you have to perform the rites of sati despite rajaram having so much of knowledge right so many languages that he knew that you have by hearted he was unable to convince his own sister in law that sati is bad you should not do it she committed sati experiences in life how experiences in life makes you moral creates in you good ethics as well
there is one thing that uh, Govind Jaiswal had said, which I had kept a print of it in my book. I have been maintaining a book since a long time. So, this is what he had said. I took it off internet. I came from a Hindi medium background, but this did not deter me. If you are confident enough to articulate your thoughts, then no one can hinder your success. No language is superior or inferior. It is an unwanted perception made by society. I took the exam in Hindi. Later, I developed a grip on English at the IAS Academy. What is it that he is talking about here? What is that important value that you have to take and imbibe in your life? See, confidence, right? So many times I try to interact with people and they are not very confident. They are fearful. Yesterday I told you, Allah mane do se tu tene. Should not worry about it. Okay, moving on. Who is this lady? Gunjan Saxena. When was the first time you heard of her, madam? Madam Isheta. Uh, Kargil War. Very good. When was the last time you heard of her? I think there was a movie Yes, yes. Now, Gunjan Saxena's success is something that we all celebrate. Being in Kargil war, flying short is that too in a helicopter which can <laughs> fall at any point in time. And being a girl, in India women still go through patriarchy, she went through that stage. Now from an ethics perspective in this class we need to ask who was the one who supported her? It was her father, Lieutenant Colonel Anup Saxena. When your family supports you, in, imbibes in you values such as discipline, courage and everything, no matter how the society is, patriarchy, sati or whatever it is, will you succeed or not? You will. One more example of how family has put in good values and how that has gotten her success. And there are many such examples. I have just given you a few of them. Have you heard of a guy called as Albert Einstein? Who is this guy, madam? What did he do? He invented the. Hey, that is Edison, madam. <laughs> what did Einstein do? Heard or correct? Theory of? Ah, good. Next, was he awarded Nobel Prize for that or for something else? What was the other thing that he did? You have studied this. Science and Tech, GS3 paper, prelims paper, you have studied it. I have already forgotten. Photoelectric effect. It was for this he was awarded Nobel Prize. Ma Madam, you are googling. <laughs> right. So, come back. Listen, listen. Albert Einstein, when he was growing up, now he was just like you people. He had ADHD. You know what is ADHD? Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Right? The moment 5 minutes is there for uh, 10 a.m., your hand goes to your mobile. Attention deficit. Hyperactive. You cannot focus. Everyone of us faces that. Your stomach is growling for breakfast now. That also reduces your focus. Albert Einstein had this ADHD to the ultimate level. Ultimate. Epic level he had. He could not focus on one thing. His teachers told him that this guy would amount to nothing. He is a useless fellow. That is how he is going to die. Imagine your Albert Einstein's mother. Will you be happy or unhappy? Unhappy only. And you will also be angry against his teachers. Are yaar, aise kaise? Mere beta ko aisa bol raha hai. If it was a Bihari mother, pakka slap. Not a Bihari mother, any Indian mother would have slapped. So, Albert Einstein's mother, she gets him a violin. Okay? Now, in this violin, she gets him a violin and also a teacher. So, her hope is when Albert Einstein is playing that violin, he will develop some focus. But Albert Einstein being he, who he was at that age, he took that violin and he broke it. If it was my mother, pakka, slapu, kiradadisa, ota illa. But still, his mother persisted with him. She got him another violin and again a teacher. 
slowly he started developing that focus. Einstein himself says, whatever I am today in my life was because my mother taught me how to focus. Whatever discoveries, inventions he made, he did not make inventions, he made lot of discoveries and proposed theories. He made those things when he was thinking and on his other hand he had violin. We also play violin pitil, but in a different way. <laughs> you understood what I am saying? Pitil, right, coming back, his mother. Same is the case with Edison as well. His mother believed in him when his own teachers did not. Family creating success by imbibing in you good ethical values. Okay. Who is this guy? Sachin Tendulkar. I know he is Sachin Tendulkar. Every Indian knows he is a Sachin Tendulkar. Who is he with? Ramakant Achrekar. That is the thing. Now, whatever success Tendulkar has had in his life, see, apart from his very immaculate state, drive, and everything, the success is because he had respect for the game. Yes or no? It is because he had the discipline in that game. Many cricketers have come, many cricketers will come, but Tendulkar's name will be there. Along with Rahul Dravid, madam. I also like Dravid. Don't worry. These values that Tendulkar held very close to his heart was because of his teacher, Ramakant Achreka. Imagine if Ramakant Achreka was not there. Was Tendulkar's success possible then? No. Imagine Tendulkar's elder brother was not there, then also it would not have been possible. Ramakant Achrekar, when Tendulkar was indisciplined, Tendulkar as a kid was indisciplined. He was the one who brought discipline to him. One time, Ramakant slapped him. If Ramakant had done this, now his parents would have filed a case against him. I am not justifying punishment. What I am justifying is, a teacher should be given some freedom and flexibility to mould a child. His parents gave him that. Teachers playing a prominent role. Have you heard of Abdul Kalam? Now, Abdul Kalam was mission director at ISRO for a project. Which project am I talking about? Chandrayana, eh? Which project am I talking about? Initially, he was the mission director. Integrated, missile development, that is different, my friend. DRDO me aata hai wo. Isro me ta, Abdul Kalam. Satellite launching vehicle. Our first launching vehicle mechanism. When he was mission director, his boss was a guy called as Professor Satish Dhawan. Now, satellite launch vehicle, first thing we are about to launch, the computer starts beeping. Now, the, it was a very minor malfunction. So, his uh, colleagues told him, Mr. Kalam, you just neglect that and you go for a manual launch. He did that. First stage was successful. Second stage, problems start to happen and it burst. Imagine in India, where we have less money, we have launched a satellite launch vehicle and it has failed in the first attempt. And if you are a journalist, you want to know the answer. And you are mission director, you are a very young kid. You have to face this journalist who want answer. All the probability that you will be nervous. Yes or no? Satish Dhawan sir knew this. Boss of his true. He comes to Kalam, says let us go to uh, this uh, interview. He sits next to Kalam and he says, Satish Dhawan, he does not let Kalam talk. He says, we failed. But I have utmost trust in my team and we will be successful. That is it. No complicated words, no flashy words, truth. When you have your own boss or your teacher in this case, who has showcased this amount of integrity, openness and trust in you, will you be inspired by that or will you get uh, very irritated by that? Inspired. Next year, satellite launching vehicle is a success. And this time, Professor Satish Dhawan does not go with him. He lets 
Kalam take the interview. This is the reason why ISRO is successful. It is not because we are launching 100 or 108, it does not matter their numbers. From an ethics perspective that institution is successful because it has been built on a very good set of core human values. Other public institutions they have failed because there is no human value. Why did Air India fail? Because it was in debt is it? No, it was a corrupt organization. There was too much of political interference which is not good. You are getting my point? Yes or no? Teacher, can you give me one more example of a person pushed into the path of morality because of a teacher? Pushed into the path. Teacher, educational institution, anything you can choose. You can choose your modern India history if you want. Give me one example, one person who comes to your mind. Sorry? Subhash Chandra Bose, who was his teacher? Siyadas, very good. Then you have Gokule and Gandhiji. But what I was looking for was Swami Vivekananda and Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Right? Even Vivekananda was a ADHD candidate only. Very smart, very energetic, but he did not have a moral purpose. Who gave him that moral purpose? Ramakrishna. Okay? Like this. I still have more examples guys, but because of the constraint of time, I am limiting. But I am hoping and I am trusting that once you go back home, over and above what we have discussed, you will write a bit more from your end. Go, have your breakfast. Once we come, we will complete this and then we will look into other aspects. Alright? Have small breakfast, do not go for large. Varna, you will come back and sleep here. Thank you. Do you understand what we spoke about? Which which person inspired you or got to you? Today, what we have discussed some examples. Which person inspired you or connected with you a lot more? Swami Vivekananda. Next, Govind Jaiswala. <laughs> I want you all of you to win, okay? But in the process of winning. Don't put too much of pressure on yourself. Enjoy the process. Okay? And success to high. If not first, it will come eventually. Go ahead. Thank you.